Hey y'all, Mark Crawford here with Sustainable Frugal Living. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, electric fencing. We may cover a few other things as well. Um, we've got our pigs on the other side here. We've got our goats on, on this pen. And right now our, our, um, we've got our chicken coop, our new chicken coop. And the chickens and goats are hopefully on this side <laughs> in this quarter acre paddock free ranging the pigs are on the other side but today let's talk a little bit about electric fencing some of the do's and don'ts i'll uh, express some humility here and show you some of the things i did wrong and also some tips and tricks to maybe help you get done a little faster or just to get done period um the first thing i wanted to show is what we've set up here is a typical pig type electric fencing so six to the first one eight to the second one and ten to the last one or the third one which will put put your top wire at 24 inches high um that's awesome for pigs and it's actually good for uh, small dwarf goats and pygmy goats as well when you're purchasing livestock from someone else that doesn't have electric fencing they're totally ignorant to what it is and that's a bad thing because if you're using electric fencing to keep them in a paddock area like a quarter acre here or a half acre or even larger especially you want to train them to the fence so they know what it is and it's there for their protection to keep them in where they're supposed to be when you first bring them home you want to keep them in the pen for a few days as much as a week doesn't hurt anything that way they understand where the water's coming from your food their shelter they become acclimated to their home and that's a good thing because that way at night when you want to pin them up to protect them from predators and so forth they'll come back to their home to be fed and get water and shelter and so forth their their home or their pen is where you should be running some electric wires before you let them out into the paddocks run your electric wires through their pen so that they become acclimated to the electric wire otherwise if you just leave them or if you just let them out right into a pasture or wooded area or a paddock or acreage they're not going to know what it is and if they come to the electric fence and they stick their head underneath it or through it and they get shocked they naturally want to go forward which is going to put them on the wrong side of the electric fence that's a bad thing so by having the electric wires running through the pin they can't go forward with this configuration here because the electric wire is here we've got a panel right here six inches away from it so if they get shocked by it, they're not going to go forward into this panel. They're going to go backwards. And that's what you want to train them to do. Eventually, they're going to get shocked by the electric fence as they get curious. Usually two to three times is all it really takes. Sometimes only once. For instance, our dogs, this is Titus right over here. He got shocked one time and that's it. That was it. Uh, he didn't want to have anything else to do with electric fence. Now, Olive, on the other hand, She's been shocked two or three times. I think now she's <laughs> finally coming around that, uh, eh, I really don't like that electric fence. So anyway, uh, running through your pen, you wanna make sure you're well insulated, like, like what I've got here, these rubber insulators, so that you don't ground out on the panel. This panel is touching the ground. So if this electric fence, in any way, the, the hot part of the fence touches this panel, then the animals aren't gonna get a sufficient shock from the fence to help them understand what's going on so basically i've got this run about six inches off the end panel right through both pins so that the animals can be trained to it they understand what it is and that's very very important at that point you can let them out okay let's go to the other side of electric fence and i'm going to show you from the charger grounding and some of the fence posts well, it looks like we have a goat up on the chicken coop. <laughs> Natalie. <laughs> She's on the wrong side now. Oh, you can see Natalie's on the wrong side now. She'll jump back up and go over again, looks like. I think that's what she's fixing to do. 
So you know she can't go in the chicken coop from the other end, from the end she's on, or the side she's on. Hope she'll figure that out. She'll go back over. <laughs> I noticed yesterday they were getting through, or she was getting through from the end of this panel and the coop, which makes a V notch there, and she was easily just going right over. So I put some uh, welded wire up so it's as high as that panel, what, 50 inches high, I guess. And then you just saw her. That, that don't hold her back either. She just jumps up there, climbs over, climbs on top, and goes right down. Anyway, pretty cool. This part of the electric fence is the number one reason why most people have difficulty with electric fencing. And that's a, a good ground. This is a ground rod. It's actually a rebar. And some people say don't use rebar for grounding, but it works just fine. This is a four foot rod. And I've got two of them. I've got one back over there by the charger. But this one here, as long as you clean it off real well, I use a sanding block um, and, and, a, and a cloth to get all the corrosion off of it. Use a mechanical connector like this, a ground connector like this, instead of just wrapping it around. Wire goes from here to another one over here. And this is roughly 10 feet away from this one to that one. We've got about 10 feet and we've got a second one here. And going back to the rebar, the reason I use rebar instead of the, uh, the galvanized zinc ground rods is that those ground rods are like 15 bucks or 16 bucks a piece. And you're looking at two of them. So you're looking at 30 to $35 with these uh, rebar uh, pieces they're only four bucks a piece that's only eight dollars uh, we're all about sustainable frugal living and so anywhere that I can save some money that's not going to deter on the quality of the system I'm going to do it and you know there, there's people out there who say no you shouldn't be using rebar because it corrodes and it'll, it'll fall to pieces in the ground and that sort of thing well you have to be aware of your situation. Here we have a sandy loam which doesn't hold moisture very well. So we're not going to have the issues, for instance, if this was stuck into a more organic soil, like a black gumbo or something like that, that's always wet and it's always uh, has a lot of uh, moisture. So it's, it's, it's not really an issue here on our homestead but it might be on yours so work with what you've got like everybody says and be aware uh, if you have real moist soil you might want to use a regular zinc grounding rod and pay the 16 bucks and get two of them it's always better to have two of them link them together with a single wire um, all the way to your controller here and you'll have a good ground for the controller you have a good ground for the controller that's the number one hurdle. Now the, um, the second thing is grounding at your end post or anywhere in line, grounding anywhere. And I'll go over that here in a minute. On this system here, we have a, uh, a charge controller. This one's putting out, let me show you what the, I don't know if you can see it. I'll put our ground in here. Put this up here. It's kind of hard to see in the daylight. I don't know if you can see that. It's very, very difficult to see in the daylight. But that's shooting up between six and 7,000 volts. And that's plenty of, of voltage for, for pigs you're fine on the lower end of the scale, two or three thousand. But for a sheep and goat, you want to be up in that upper range, like five, six thousand. This charge controller here is running off of AC. You can see the cord plugged in here. And it goes through a DC adapter because all electric fences are basically DC. 
This one here is optional. It, it comes with a easy plug-in type. So you can plug in a, an adapter for AC power, or you can plug in another uh, um, cord adapter for DC powering if you want to use a battery. And actually I've used this one with a battery for several years. And when we did this setup here, I went ahead and I'm using AC. So um, those are nice if you can get the charge controllers that are AC or DC. That way if you want to use it in a pasture or somewhere where you don't have any power, you can use a battery and a solar panel to keep your battery tipped off and, and use it that way. And this is the pulse type as well, which is um, typically what you'll find with a DC battery powered unit. But what we're doing on this one here, uh, we're using AC from the house which uh, this is temporary. Um, I understand that you're really not so supposed to be using extension cores, long extension cores for these fence controllers. So uh, if you look back over that way, you see the um, our meter loop and it's about, oh, maybe 15 to 20 feet from our electric fence. So eventually I'm gonna put a, a breaker in that panel and run it over, run a line underground, uh, a heavy gauge line, like a 12 to a 10 or 12 gauge wire, and relocate this fence controller. Okay, here we are at the end post. We've got a wooden post. This is, <laughs> here's Becky. Okay, <laughs> back to the fencing. <laughs> it's good to have these ratchet they call them strainers i believe ratchet strainers to where you can put some tension on the wire like i've got here and so you've got your electric current that's going here and it's actually going through this strainer through this wire so when you go around the post you want to make sure you have your rubber insulation and when i first wired these up i didn't have that i had just like this top one i had going through the strainer here and the wire going around the post thinking this wooden ground um, actually i probably didn't think about it that much i just did it in haste and i wasn't getting a good uh, shock from the fence all the time 100 percent Sometimes it would give a good shock and sometimes it wouldn't. And I finally figured out that it was actually grounding on this wood post. This wood post is not a very good ground, but it was enough to where it was causing it issues here and there. So what I did is I, I put the insulator, the black insulator all the way around. And right now I have just these two that are hot. And this one is just a dead wire. And uh, it's working great. That solved it. So anywhere you have an end post, you want to make sure you're, you're not grounding to the post, even if it's wood. If it's metal, obviously it'll ground. Um, and I've got a jumper wire here on this side that goes across to this wire, and that wire goes all the way around the whole perimeter. Okay, in this view here, you can see the end post, the wooden post and then two of the black line posts, the plastic line post, and then the T-post. The T-post is basically in the center run from the end post to the animal pen. And these plastic posts are roughly about 10 to 12 feet apart is a maximum spacing for electric fencing. Another tip that I learned from um, Red Toolhouse, it's a great channel. I'll give you a shout out. If y'all haven't checked his channel, check it out. He's got uh, awesome information. What he recommends, especially for pigs, is don't go with the 17 gauge wire, go with the 14 gauge wire. This wire right here is a little thicker. It's the 14 gauge wire. It's a lot stronger going to carry more of a shock as well, more amperage than the thinner 17 gauge wire. Uh, especially when you're dealing with pigs, like these rascals here. So anyway, um, one of the issues that we had out here was when I was putting these in the ground, see they've got a, a stake. Sometimes you only go in an inch or two and you'll hit a rock and it's not going anymore. So get a short piece of rebar, like six, eight inches long, and go ahead and drive that rebar in where you want the your post 
and that way you'll you'll create a hole there first and then you can come back and put your post in real easy because you need your posts all the way down to the bottom or all the way down to the ground so it'll be uh, keep your spacing correct and everything and it keeps it sturdy you want all that you want this whole spike in the ground you don't want to stick you don't, you don't want it sticking up like this so uh, use a piece of rebar if you have to to get that hole created and then you can stick your spike in and you're good anyway I hope that gives you some ideas on uh, electrical fencing um, like I said the one of the things I did wrong is I didn't make sure it was grounded on the end and um, one of the things that can help you is, is using a piece of rebar to create the hole anyway make sure you have two ground wire two ground rods that's very important and it's not grounding anywhere and make sure your animals are trained to it before you let them out into the paddock area that's very important again uh, I want to thank you all for for watching I uh, appreciate your support give us a thumbs up share it with your friends and relatives on your social media if you'd like to uh, see more videos hit the subscribe button below and the notification button so you'll be notified when I put up new videos if you don't want to be notified at least just hit the subscribe button and you can check back later on to see what I put up and maybe something of interest to you again our channel is called sustainable frugal living we're all about um, DIY type things like solar rainwater collection electric fencing uh, livestock and uh, just er anything and everything uh, sustainable and frugal again thanks for watching look for our next videos God bless